Hello, everyone. This is Ivan Oleg Smith with Yoga You Online. And I am extremely pleased to be here today with Dr. Joe Weller and yoga therapist Lynn Cremando. Dr. Weller holds a doctorate, doctorate in physical therapy, and he works at Elite Health Services in Old Greenwich, Connecticut, where he specializes in functional manual therapy. And his graduate, his uh, PT doctorate, he got from Long Island University, where he also earned the College of Health Professions Dean's Award for Clinical Excellence. That sounds pretty impressive, Joe. Thank you. And you also, Joe, hold a bachelor's in exercise science and mm -hmm. in your practice incorporate a lot of principles from exercise science with the manual therapy skills in order to provide individualized care to, to patients, mm -hmm. which we're going to be talking more about. Um, Lynn Cremando, who many of you already know, is a yoga therapist par excellence with many years of experience in both teaching and working with individual yoga therapy clients. So teaching both large group classes in yoga therapy, as well as specializing with individual conditions. Lynn, we're very proud to say, is a frequent presenter at Yoga You Online and a lead teacher in our 300-hour yoga wellness educator program. So Lynn and Joe, welcome. We're so happy to have you today. Thank you very much for having us. So you are both experts in your respective fields of yoga therapy and body work, but as we will talk more about today, you have been doing some pretty innovative cooperative work, integrating techniques from body work and yoga uh, to form new approaches to health and healing. Could you talk mo uh, more about how you met Lynn and how this cooperation came about? I want to say that we met cute. Um, <laughs> I have been working with TMD trans. Uh, what is it? <laughs> um, Temporal mandibular dysfunction or disorder. Dysfunction. My whole life, my mom had it. My daughter has it. I've bitten through every bite plate. And then finally, I, I found one of the foremost, I think, would you say, Joe, he's one of the leading experts he is the leading. in this field, yeah. uh, a dentist who, structure, who, who, who works on jaw issues, which affect many things other than your jaw, sleep, uh, cervical spine, all kinds of other issues. And I've been working with him pretty successfully, but I happened to be in his office and said, I'd like to do a little bit more work. And I'm interested in finding a functional yoga therapist, but I've been looking all over and I can't find one. Do you know any? And he said, no one, we have one in the office. <laughs> uh, and he brought Joe in and I started working with Joe the next day. And so as we started working together, I have like a broken body from this accident I had 20 years ago and it's crooked from head to toe. And I thought, man, what he did with my jaw, I wonder if he could do things with my other crooked parts. And we started working together therapeutically, but I started to realize that the things he was doing manually, therapeutically, would be of great use to my students if I could figure out a way to extrapolate some of the parts into things that people could do on their own. And I started work with Joe on that. And so we, I think we've been, we've found quite a few ways of taking some of the therapies and some of the concepts that you would normally get from working with a therapist of Joe's caliber, which is really high, and work with healthy people who just want to be in balance and have better posture and, and you know, have, have a good walking stride because they're uh, not hiking up one hip or the other. So uh, that's what we've been doing together for now, well, the past year. Yeah, just about. Yeah. Mm, so cool. Yeah, and, and Joe, 
um, loss of function and mobility is kind of like something that most people think it's just part of getting older, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when we look around people over 50, it's sort of a, like a long, slow slide downhill. Um, but increasingly, there's like more and more people such as yourself who's saying like, it doesn't have to be that way. And there's really a lot that we can do to slow those degenerative changes in the body that undermines our freedom of movement over time. Mm -hmm. So that I think is like right up your alley. You're much more focused on prevention. Mm -hmm. And you have a doctorate in physical therapy, which is usually about treating problems. So how did you get into this work where you're saying, well, actually, I want to work on keeping people healthy and retain freedom of movement as they get older? Yeah, so um, I was lucky enough to do a residency program and got certified through the Institute of Physical Art, um, who focuses on not just treating patients and their injuries. So if I have a shoulder injury, I'm just treating the shoulder. We look at how efficient is the whole body, how they all work together. You know, I've seen a lot of patients with hip pain, I treat their hip, the hip pain comes back. Knee pain, I treat the knee, the knee pain comes back. You know, so it's really, you know, what are the underlying causes of this person physically that's causing a lot of the dysfunctions and repetitive or the recidivism of some of their injuries? You know, so for every low back pain patient, I'm looking at their feet. For me, their feet is their base of support. That's where the body's scaffolding lies and everything above that is built up so if their foot and their ankle is out of position or if they're a chronic ankle sprainer it makes sense that their low back's going to have pain because it's going to put more torque in the, on their knee if the mm -hmm. foot can absorb those forces then you're going to place a lot more of those forces going to be absorbed somewhere up their kinetic chain usually it's in the hip of the low back mm -hmm. um so i think the biggest part of keeping the body from aging the way that a lot of people think about it is, is just keeping the body moving in the most efficient way that it can. Um, so treating multiple parts of the body to prevent not just their injury from getting worse, but from other parts of their body from being injured or, or rehashing old injuries. And, you know, all of those tension patterns, we, we kind of have them all life, right? Those mm -hmm. foot issues, the misalignment patterns, the mm -hmm. knee issues, it's sort of chronic tension patterns that most people have in the form of one kind of asymmetry in the body or another. Mm -hmm. So what is, it, what is it about getting older that makes it like all of a sudden the body says, well, it's been there all along, but now I can't handle it anymore. So something yeah. breaks down. I mean, everything has a breaking point. It's the story of the, the hair that broke the camel's back. And I tell that to my patients a lot, you know, you're only going to get away with your compensations for so long. And that's with every system, not just the musculoskeletal and the nervous system. Um, you know, so it's, it's really a, a good mix of staying active, staying mobile. But while you're staying active and mobile, you're doing it in a way that's not putting compensatory stresses on other parts of your body. Right, right. And are there specific changes in the soft tissues that exacerbates that process of those strain patterns all of a sudden turning into symptoms? Yeah, I mean, loss of flexibility, whether it be through soft tissues, so tendons, ligaments, joints, nerves, arteries, veins are all still soft tissues. Um, also, loss of joint mobility. You know, I think the biggest thing of why people don't necessarily age so gracefully from a musculoskeletal component is they stop moving as much. You know, so just because you can't maybe go skiing doesn't mean you can't pick up a new hobby like power walking or something like that. You know, so keeping the joints and the body lubricated is crucial to staying healthy. You know, talking to a lot of yoga and yogis, you know, fascia is crucial to the mobility that you have available in your system. You know, and the best way to lubricate your fascia is through movement, movement and hydration. If you don't do those two things, you can't expect to have a healthy body. Just like if you don't spend the time to brush your teeth twice a day, you're going to have cavities. You know, it's the same thing. If you don't do your stretch and go for your walk twice a day, you're going to have joint and musculoskeletal pain. Um, right. So I think that's a, that's a good way to, to, to look at it with my patients, at least, because they understand the importance of brushing your teeth. Now they understand the importance of exercise. You know, it's, it's cause and effect. Right, right. Yeah. And, and then usually when we think about keeping the joints healthy, keeping the muscles healthy, one of the things we think about 
is stretching and yoga of course for many people is equated with stretching exercises or stretching techniques mm -hmm. but stretching particularly if you need stretching <laughs> if you're very tight can be like a very frustrating process right because mm -hmm. it's you can't get anywhere yeah so then why don't you talk about how there's many different dimensions to stretching and part of the work you two have been doing is exploring like how stretching can be a lot more than the usual static stretch we do in yoga you know when i uh started doing yoga static stretching and seeing if you could get your head to your knee or you could go into a wide angle forward fold and get your head below and be in between your legs was a thing mm -hmm. and um the more i've studied and the more i've delved into this work the more I have to say, let's pull back the lens and say, why am I here? Why am I on this mat? What am I doing here? What is it going to get me if I can static stretch my way into a Gumby shape, uh, but I'm still not walking right? <laughs> you know, but I've still got the same pain I got onto the mat with because that kind of stretching isn't necessarily useful. So why am I here? And what can I achieve? And Joe uses this word a lot, so I'll let him talk about it. But if we, I don't really use the word stretch when I teach, because I find that most people think that means pull your muscles past the point of their end range and see how far you can get. And there's not really any, uh, unless you're, not in balance unless you definitely have a uh, you know one muscle on one side that's shorter and needs that kind of attention mm -hmm. um static stretching is great but this idea that i am now thinking about is mobility and you can get that from a lot of other places i started looking to the health and fitness industry where they're looking at concepts that Joe can speak much more fluidly about autogenic inhibition and uh, isolated active stretching and really using stretching for a purpose. So rather than thinking, can I get my head to my knee? The question that I have for my clients is, can you open a heavy door? Can you pick up your grandchildren? Can you walk up and down the stairs? Um, and mobility which speaks really to resilience and techniques where we're cultivating the ability of the muscle fibers to contract and release when they need to, to build strength when they need to, to stabilize when they need to, is a completely different story. And it really opens up a whole world that I have found really fascinating. But Joe, maybe you wanna add on to what I said because um, you're, so much better on all of those <laughs> techniques. I don't want to give everything away, so I'll leave some for the course. But mobility, I think, is just not just about, similar to what you mentioned, it's not just about how well can a hamstring lengthen. You know, there's a lot of things that control that hamstring lengthening, and the main thing is the nervous system. And I think a lot of what we're going to share on this course is how to utilize some of the phenomenons and reflexes in the nervous system in order to gain length without doing a traditional stretch where you have to stay in a position of length and tension for a long period of time. For some people, you could have tight hamstrings, but it's not your hamstring that's causing the tightness. Um, so if your nervous system is really wound up, your nerve won't want that hamstring to release. And that could be what's causing that tightness there. So there's reflexive tightness for good and for bad um, in the body that we don't always want to just bash away and go through normal stretching. You want to do a self-assessment first to see, okay, what's limiting my mobility and then figure out what it is so that you can target it. So. Yeah, and that's, I think, one of the, I don't know, we could, you can call it a controversy, but one of the things that come out when people talk about stretching is that it's not really that we're lengthening the muscles. It's really mm -hmm. changing the neuromuscular integration, the way the brain function in relation to the muscles. Mm -hmm. And I I know that one of the things you two have been doing is working with, I believe it's referred to muscle energy techniques in the field of osteopathy, 
um, like PNF or active isolated stretching that really works on changing how the brain relates to the muscles mm -hmm. uh, and can have, as I understand it, quite some magical effects. Um, so Joe, why don't you talk a little bit, you know, what is PNF, what is active isolated stretching and how do you use it in your work to create change? Yeah, so we'll get into the, the nitty gritty of it in the presentation and at the PowerPoint, but in a broad sense, PNF stands for proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. So we use it in physical therapy a lot differently in how we're going to use it in this course, but there is a part of it that can be utilized by other healthcare professionals that aren't physical therapists or neuro rehab therapists that essentially you can target a muscle by contracting it. And after you let that muscle relax, there's a neurological principle that occurs there that allows the muscle to lengthen. And we're using that phenomenon, either reciprocal or ortogenic inhibition, to allow that reflexive relaxation to occur. That's where you're pushing further into a range of motion and gaining something out of the stretch. It's also safer than normal stretching, in my opinion, because you have a uh, contraction along with it. So you're mm -hmm. safeguarding from overstretching because you're still contracting. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a few cool techniques that we'll get into um, that help describe one, what's the actual process on a muscle spindle level, um, but two, how do you apply this, not just to what we're gonna focus on in the course, but to other areas of the body and, and let people explore with that. Yeah, yeah. And, and active isolated stretching is a variation of? Active isolated stretching uses the principles of PNF for the hold, relax, contract, relax, um, contract, relax with another contraction built on top of it. Um, and it's active because you can do it dynamically by going in and out of an emotion. Mm -hmm. um, you activate muscles in order to allow for that reflexive relaxation. Um, and you can get into non-traditional positions, which Len and I kind of worked on together, bringing you through the sequence, which we think is, is awesome because it's not, you're not just targeting a specific muscle, you're targeting a motion. So relearning that motion and not only the length of the muscle in which that is controlling how far you can go into a range. And that's, that's where some of that neuromuscular reeducation comes into play too. Right, right. So if we bring it back to the whole discussion about strain patterns in the body and how the soft tissues over time just break down mm -hmm. and those strain patterns tend to be the fault line through which we develop you know, chronic pain issues, whatever it may be, knee problems, hip problems. So those, how does that then, the work you do with releasing tight muscles through these stretching techniques, how does that then translate into greater freedom of movement and reduced risk of chronic pain issues? Yeah, so it's a great question. So if you're able to target your mobility practice based on the components after your assessment that you feel are most limiting you, whether it be your joint range of motion or your muscular range of motion, you're gonna have a better sense of Am I hitting the target with my treatment, with my self-mobility training? And it better directs you to treat what you need first before you go do with these explorative things. So through an assessment, if you see, okay, I'm lacking range of motion in my ankle and I'm gonna stretch my calf until I'm blue in the face. Well, if it's your ankle joints, your talipool joint that's restricting the motion, you could stretch your ankle, your calf all you want. You never address the problem. So that's where you get in yoga, I think sometimes people try to give themselves too much mobility and stretch their muscles too much at times without mm -hmm. doing either the re-education to it or addressing the other systems that could be limiting their mobility. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that re-education piece is really important too because I don't know that people you know, focus on the fact that movement comes from your nervous system and that is a function of a nervous system process and mm -hmm. that what you're doing when you're doing any yoga pose has the potential of being transformative, mm -hmm. but it won't be transformative 
if you are doing your same movement pattern and you're not challenging your nervous system to relearn a pattern that is healthier. Mm -hmm. And that I think happens a lot in yoga where people are doing their go-to pose in their go-to way. Mm -hmm. And they're not realizing that over time they're causing a repetitive stress injury, you know. Right, right. Yeah, and I, as I understand it from, in orthopedics, there is a saying, motion is lotion. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, it's, it's fairly well known that movement can be very useful for lubricating the joints and keeping, you know, the musculoskeletal system healthy. But I would imagine there is also this element that if you have restricted movement in parts of the body, you never do get motion into those places right so in in terms of getting movement into those um sticky places right it's you know that's another function where it's not just about stretching it really is about bringing this in a sense intelligence of the body back into those dead spaces or black holes in the body so it's really imperative to, once you've gained a new range of motion, is your body's not going to own it and it's not going to keep those gains that you just worked so hard for without retraining that mind-body connection, similar to the way that you mentioned. So we'll go through in the course a bunch of techniques that you can do to say, okay, now I gained this mobility. Great. What do I do with this? If you don't lose it, if you don't use it, you lose it. You know, So you need to find ways to challenge yourself in these new ranges of motion before you can even think about sustaining some of the gains that you get through the practice. You know, so gaining the mobility is one piece, keeping it and using it is a whole nother. Um, so, so that's, it's really important to rebuild that connection between those two, because for instance, if I gained some degrees of hip extension because I lengthened my psoas, that body has no idea what to do in those new few degrees of motion that you gained. You know, so if it doesn't understand what to do with it, it might even get tighter than what it was before you stretched it because it's going to reflexively tighten up because it feels vulnerable in that spot. So end range strengthening is really important. You got to start light with it. You can't get too heavy with it when you're starting off the bat. Um, but it's a crucial part of not just having increases in mobility but retaining it so you're not stretching your hamstring every single day and you don't feel like you're getting any gains into it right, right. I yeah think the other piece of that is um the way that you're doing any of that practice and going back to the neuromuscular re-education part of what could be happening is if you're trying to stretch your way into you know oblivion you've got mechano re receptors that are going, oh, hell no. You know, we're not going there. Yeah. And so you think you're really tight. You have to go even further and the mechano receptors are going, oh no, we're not going. And so you're fighting against yourself rather than working in a kind of intuitive way. So even in some of the techniques that I've gone with Joe, where in yoga, we try to go further and further and further. and in some of these practices that we do together, we're going like a half an inch, mm -hmm. a half an inch. That is how much a mechanoreceptor is gonna go, oh, okay, I could be okay with that. Versus the way that we do sometimes, I have seen yoga be very, in terms of stretching competitive. You know, how far can I go? How far can I push this uh, versus do you have another half an inch there that is holistic, that is integrated, right. uh, which I think is a really different process. It's a kind of a rethinking of a, a way of practicing. Yeah, and I, I like the way you use that term integrated. It's, it's reintegrating a range of motion back into the nervous system, is, it, I think is the, the best way of thinking of it. It's integrating the motion, the mobility, the dynamic control to go in and out of a movement pattern, you know? So I don't, very rarely do I stretch a hamstring just because the hamstring is tight. It's what is that hamstring or the tightness of the hamstring restricting that patient from doing? And you want to bring it back to function. Similar to what you said, I don't care if you can lift 40 pounds, I care if you can open a heavy door or pick up your grandchild from the floor. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I guess also that realization that it isn't just an isolated tight hamstring. Whatever piece is dysfunctional will affect the whole body. And I thought it was very interesting. You said that any thing, you know, lower down in the kinetic chain will affect, you know, something much higher up. So chronic low back pain very often is caused by issues in the feet, in the hip. Um, now, do we need a functional manual therapist to work with this or can we get a program that we could use as part of our yoga practice to at least create a better self-care, long-term self-care program? Well, we've spent a year um, thinking, yes, we could. <laughs> no. um, it's great to have a manual therapist do this stuff. And when you're in a position where you need a manual therapist, you got to go to a manual therapist. But a lot of what I've been working with with Joe is how could I extrapolate out of what you're doing in a really heavy way? How could I extrapolate out this, you know, this term I always use, Bija, the seed of what you're doing? And what is the beauty of this is most of the work we've done together translates beautifully into yoga poses that already exist. Mm -hmm. So what we've been working on is putting some of these techniques into yoga poses that are already yoga poses. Right, right. You know, and just adding the PNF. Yeah, yeah. Adding the, you know, the, the, the active work which is what we're going to be treated to in the, in the course that you are going to be presenting, which I'm so super excited about because having studied some of these stretching techniques myself, I've always wondered, well, why haven't anyone, you know, why hasn't this been integrated into yoga a long time ago? Because you really can go so much further in your practice in a much less injury prone way. Um, and I think what's so great about your collaboration is that we have an expert in, you know, the functional manual therapy and PNF and active isolated stretching and an expert in yoga. So we're just so super excited about, you know, this collaboration and the course you're going to be offering. As your so, way. Thank you so much, both of you. Any last um, little kind of comments that you want to add i know i'm just i'm just really excited to to run this course for the first time we've been working really hard on it um yeah. it's been a pleasure working with lynn as a patient and as a colleague at this point um so we're just really excited to get to show you everything we've been working on this past year i think we should, we should maybe say what we'll do a little bit in the course because we're going to geek out for the first part and joe's going to just overwhelm us with technical uh user-friendly technical terms i try to keep it as user-friendly as possible yes and then we're gonna show some ways to do some self-assessments that people can and the self-assessments will be via yoga poses so yeah. and i think doing the self-assessment via a yoga pose that you often do can both point out an error in the way you're doing the pose in the commitment that you're making to where things are in your body because you're working off a picture instead of you know working off what's what's really going on in your body and it can really be informative about uh ways to practice that can be super beneficial over over years so you started talking about aging and healthy aging and one thing we want to do with healthy aging is we want healthy joints we want good mechanics of movement right we want good balance we want all of those things to be working we want integrated mobility for all the days of our lives right so that's what we're doing kind of work on via yoga. Right, right.
Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you so much, both of you. Can't wait. And um, thanks for joining us today. And um, everyone, thanks for listening in. And we hope to see you on the course with Lynn and Joe. Take care. Thank you so much. Goodbye.